I make art, uh, specifically the work that I make, um, as a way of understanding the world. Um, and I try and keep everything very simple. Um, it's sort of an, it's quite an outmoded way of making art in a way, to pair things right, right back. Um, um, but I try and focus on one small element in the world um, and distill it down into a, um, a material which then, with all that space around it, is able to speak much more loudly, I think, um, in contrast to um, many of the trappings of my generation, like an MTV generation where you're trying to do everything or um, shelved as much as possible with as many colours. Um, I really try and um, focus on the moments that we all have in our lives which are sort of still and reflective. Um, and I try and create scenarios which are able to transfer some of those experiences of my own into a public sphere where anyone can come along and um, experience um, a, a similar thing. Obviously, you can't dictate what they experience, but hopefully you can imbue as much of that quality into a physical um, situation as possible so that they can therefore get um, an element of that when they encounter the work. Um, I mean, to further the, um, the thought on um, on how m most messages are portrayed uh, or are um, televised in my generation, um, you know, you've got these things like iP iPads and iPhones and whatnot that kind of do everything. That are um, the most popular devices are the ones which uh, sort of cover the most territory. Whereas I'm trying to do, in a sense, the opposite, which is um, to pair things right back to um, their most sort of still components. Yeah. Um, so in a way, I think I'm trying to um, operate out of a position of difference and to um, create situations um, out of that position. Yeah. The piece has no title. Um, I was considering titles when I was making it um, and ended up um, deciding that it didn't have a title, which is um, why I've called the piece, well, by the piece is known as no title, um, as opposed to untitled, which has a sort of a, stig a small stigma as well through the, um, through the sort of 60s conceptualism um, and minimal, minimal um, movements. Um, um, because that, the, to call a very minimal piece untitled has its own, um, establishes its own set of parameters and sort of leads you into thinking in, in a way which I don't want to do. Um, so this piece is um, comes from a time when I was just thinking about how very large systems can be distilled down into individual um, moments. And I was thinking about the weather. I was, think, I was sitting um, in a park somewhere in Auckland, um, and it started to rain, and there was a, um, a flat body of water in front of me. And uh, a single raindrop fell. And I was thinking of how, how that was indicative of this huge system circulating overhead, which is um, earth encompassing. Um, and yet this one little instant was um, enough of an indication that you could extrapolate that. And if you knew the laws of that instant, you could expand that into a knowledge of the world. Um, and so I've tried to create a sculpture which is um, indicative of simple processes, but um, is outwardly focused so that if you understand the very basic parameters of the work, then the work um, grows in richness. And so um, physically the work is one copper wire that extends out of the floor and then branches into its seven, um, its seven individual threads, which each are made up of about 100 strands of very fine copper. Um, the reason I chose the material of copper is because it's um, it has been used for a long time as a way to store, I mean, to transport information um, and electricity and also digital information. Um, it's also a very good heat conductor, so it has this history of transferal, which I um, really like as a sculptural um, element. Um, also that it's multiple um, 
strands bound up into one sort of object. I played on with the fact that it expands out at a certain point, and it can be read both as um, a dispersal of information or as a contraction and a, um, and a oh, what's the word for it? Um, a condensing of information. So, um, so yeah, you can sort of draw from that what you will. I don't want to um, spell it out too much because I don't think it has one specific message, but it does have um, that as its basic parameter, which I thought of when constructing it. Yeah. So this work is both site-specific and quite unsite-specific in a way. And it's a funny thing to say, but like it obviously can only be constructed in this space because it has been constructed in this space. Um, but at the same time, and it's definitely a response to this space. Like I've, um, I've seen the space prior to construction uh, to the construction of this work, and therefore um, that set the parameters for the sculpture. So um, it's definitely a response, but at the same time, it's a work which I hope um, um, fits within and also points outwards of the space. So um, it could therefore be scaled up or down to almost any situation. And um, I think that, that um, the mobility of that sculptural motif is a real strength, that you could kind of picture that um, scenario anywhere, even though it's very definitely where it is. Yeah. Um, specifically, the things that I wanted to react to in the site where it is at the moment, uh, the natural light, um, and well, that's uh, and the three vantage points, the three floors that you can see the work from. Well, it's kind of almost four floors if you count the stairs. Um, so I wanted to create a work which um, you're able to get different approaches to, and to um, get therefore to get different readings on from various places in the gallery. And that was a real key factor was the fact that there were all these levels that you could approach the work from. So I wanted to build something that you could move around and understand via um, uh, different perspectives. Um, yeah, I also like that the natural light picks up on it quite nicely. Yeah. <laughs>